Hey YouTube, Nagasuchi here, bringing you guys a Blackwing deck profile for 2010. Uh, I don't think I've done a Blackwing deck in like ages. I mean, um, ever since Chris stopped playing them, I don't think I've really done a deck profile of them. So, uh, pretty much, uh, a couple of you guys asked me, actually like four of you guys asked me uh, to do a deck profile of Blackwings. And it just so happened that this is one of the two decks that I'm um, c considering to play at Nationals. Um, I, I went up to a, a local tournament uh, about an hour north of me on Saturday. And I pretty much was thinking on the way back, you know, what deck has, has a good matchup versus X-Sabers and, and uh, X-Sabers and, and, and Infernities. There we go. That's what it's called. Um, and I pretty much realized that Black Wings have that. Um... They don't really have many bad matchups at all. Like, really the only bad matchup is Frog Monarchs. But, um, I think if you can play around their Monarchs and set up, uh, like, Icarus Attack plays, then I think that you can beat them pretty easily with the side deck, uh, because of skill drains and stuff. So, um, yeah. And I'm pretty much just gonna get into this deck profile right now, and then I'll talk about, um, the deck a little bit later. So you got three Sirocco. Um, really good, obviously. Three Ishura. Uh, three Bora. Got three Kalut. Got a Gale. Hold Ray Gale looks sick, by the way. Two Blizzard. Two Veus. Uh, Morphing Jura. DD Crow. And Dark Crown Dragon. Uh, for spells, you got two Whirlwind, you got two Book of Moons, two Book of the Moons, excuse me. <laughs> uh, you got an Allure, MST, Heavy, and Brain Control. And for the traps, you got three Icarus Attacks. Uh, really amazing, uh, this format. You got two Royal Oppressions. You got two Dust Tornadoes. Two Bottomless, uh, Starlight Road, Solemn Judgment, Mirror Force, and Torrential. Okay, so pretty much Black Wings, um, Bobby Chambers played this, uh, played Black Wings at uh, Shonen Jump uh, Chicago. Um, and initially, I was playing a build like his, um, but, but then I talked to one of my good friends in Florida, and uh, he's like a, he's he's a really good player. And when I was down there in Florida, he he actually ended up winning the tournament playing Black Wings. So I, I I figured that I should probably ask him for some advice. And this is pretty much uh, Austin's build. And um, Bobby Chambers' build was is pretty much the same except he ran uh, cards for Black Feathers, and he ran two DD Crows, and then he didn't run Dust Tornado. So as I talk about the deck, I'll explain why um, I think some of these card choices are better. So pretty much with the monsters, there isn't really much you can do. Uh, you have to run three Shuroka, you have to run three Shura. Um, I'm considering taking out a Bora, because he's like, he's like literally like one of the worst cards like in this deck, to be honest. Um, only reason why you run it is because of Whirlwind, and he's just so bad, I think. But you have to run three because of the Whirlwind. So... The only thing I'm considering right now is taking one of him out for a second uh, DD Crow. But um, three's in there now because it's just standard, so I don't want to go too far away from the standard. Uh, then you got three Kalutes, got to run three Black, uh, two, I mean a Gale, two Blizzards, and two Values. So pretty much those, like, that's like pretty much the standard Black Wing lineup. I mean, there's nothing really you can change about that. And then Morphine Jar is kind of like um, one of my tech cards in this deck, or Austin's tech card. Um, this card's really, really good, like, um, against X Sabers, this card like by itself can like win you the game. Um, I can remember I was I was playing against um an, an X Saber deck on Tuesday, and I started in my trap dust shoot, and then I uh, set my morphing jar, flipped it on my turn. He uh, only set one card. I ended up getting like a plus three or four, and then off the morphing jar, I do trap dust shoot, and then that pretty much just won me the game right there, because I was able to see what he drew. Um, and morphing jar is really good, I think. Um, against like everything except for maybe uh, Infernities because like against Infernities is kind of weird because you know you would think the fact that um, they get to draw five that it would mess them up 
because of having a bunch of cards in their hand, but I don't know. It's, it's just kind of weird. Um, oh, yeah, Dark Arm's also staple, too. I don't know why I didn't mention that. Dark Arm's definitely staple with all this. Um, and then one DD Crow. Uh, Bobby Chambers ran two. Uh, Austin, Austin doesn't run any, actually. He just sides three. But I think one's a nice medium um, because... I felt that with two, I was drawing it too much, and I didn't want to draw it all the time. You know, uh, morphing jar me would have been better in some of those situations. So I think submitting one, citing two, um, is a pretty nice number. Um, there's really not much I can say about the spells, except for the fact that I don't run cards for black feathers. I side deck it, um, because I don't think that cards for black feathers is very good main decked. Um, you don't run that monster. You don't run that many monsters to start, so. It's kind of bad when you have a card with black feathers in your hand, but you only have one black wing. So you're kind of worried that, that you're not going to draw another monster, and then you could be really screwed. So, um, you know, it's not like a light swarm where you ran like 25 monsters, and, you know, you didn't really mind discarding them. But also you also you have to remove it, so that's also different. Um, but, yeah, the card I'm actually running over the cards for black feathers are the Dust Tornadoes. Dust Tornado is really, really good. Um, sets up your Whirlwind plays. Uh, disrupts the the Infernity uh, launcher combo, and against X Saber is just kind of like always handy because some X Saber builds are running you know two Saber holes, some are running three, some are running none, so it just kind of gives you a nice variety. Um, the three Icarus are staple, really really good this format, um, and then two Wild Oppression, um, and yeah. So then we got two Balamos, those are staple. Uh, Starlight Road is absolutely amazing this deck, like. There, there are like a lot of cards in this deck that like if you draw it turn one you probably win. Um, Starlight Road is one of those because it just it's amazing because it protects your all your back rows um, and all these back rows are really really good. Uh, if, if you open oppression um, against like X Sabers and they don't draw any back row destruction, you probably win the game. Icarus, um, if you have a lot of monsters like um, Icarus is really good. And then Whirlwind, if if you if, if you get at least one or two Whirlwind search, searches off, you probably win. Um, and then Mirror Force, I mean, Solemn, Mirror Force, and Torrential, those are all staples too. So, no, I kind of want to talk about Black Wings, like, in, like, a big tournament. Um, so only two Black Wing decks topped at, uh, Chicago, I'm pretty sure, with, uh, Bobby Chambers being the one that got the most, uh, publicity, I guess, because he went, uh, 9-1 during Swiss, which is pretty remarkable. Um, and I, like, really have a lot of respect for Bobby as a player. He's really, really good. Um, and I think that's what this deck takes, uh, to top a big event, like, like a YCS. I think you have to be a really, really skilled player and you really have to know, um, the ins and outs of this deck since, since it's not a tier one deck like X Sabres or Infernities. I, since it's, you know, since you're having to go against the meta, you have to, you have to be able to play this deck pretty much perfectly. Um, but otherwise, I think this deck is really, really good um, because of all the counters it has to the meta. Just like built into the deck. Like Icarus, this is a built-in card. You know, it's a, it's a theme card. You know, you run all these winged beasts, it's built in. It's really good against the format. Uh, DD Crow, built into the deck. It's it's a winged beast. Amazing. Dark Arm Dragon. Nobody joined Dark Arm in this format because it's not good in any of the decks. Dark Arm is an amazing card. Um, it's broken, obviously. It was broken for two, three formats. Um, so, I just I just really like how this deck can utilize cards like that. And hell, even Royal Oppression, you know. Oppression doesn't do anything in this deck. Um, you know, value works, all that stuff. So, pretty much made this video really, like, longer than what I wanted it to be. But hopefully the people out there who wanted to see this deck um, learned some stuff. And I hope you guys enjoyed it.